Alan, hey, I need you to sign this card. Get well soon, Mr. Katnick. Who's Mr. Katnick? He teaches woodshop. Couldn't do better than a postcard? Well, let's just say you might have a hard time opening an envelope. <laughs> Yeah, and unfortunately, Mr. Katnick was also our driver's ed instructor, so we're all going to be a little short-handed. I wouldn't mind teaching driver's ed. <laughs> That's a great way to start the day. Thank you. Would you, Rusty, uh, would you be able to take over his classes Tuesdays and Thursdays? I, I, actually, that's when I have my bowling league. Oh. Pam, how about you? Sorry, I'm afraid I only know how to drive a stick. <laughs> Here. I can do something more than just be a guidance counselor. All right, fine, then. It's settled. Thank you. Okay. And next up, uh, and this is very important, everybody, the State Accreditation Board is coming to Clark High, so I need you all to be on your best behavior and to try to simulate competence. <laughs> oh, no. This again? <laughs> What's the accreditation board? These are the people who decide whether we get extra funding for the year. They sit in our classes and they watch us work and they write everything down on these clipboards, basically judge us. It's pretty fascist, but yeah, it's for volleyballs and whatnot. <laughs> Indeed it is. And obviously, we need to impress them. So, starting tomorrow, that's suits and ties for the men and the regular dress code for the ladies. And Ellen, pick one and go with it. <laughs> to mean I dress well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crazy about the laughing. No, no, Ellen, it's just that, you know, that you don't exactly show up at work in, in business attire. Well, no, I got rid of all my business suits when I left my corporate life. I didn't think they'd fit in with your folksy fashions. Hey, I'm not saying you have to spend the kind of money they charged on at folksy fashions. <laughs> In my home ec class, I teach the kids to put together a wonderful ensemble of just things you'll find around the house. An old skirt, perhaps, that you could spruce up with a doily or two. <laughs> Macrame plant hanger. And some googly eyes from an old doll. <laughs> and you know what people will say when they see you in it? How come your skirt's looking at me? <laughs> Dress. This is a great shirt. It's a suede shirt. It's my favorite shirt. This is suede, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Mm. Well, not where you just put your fingers right there. Well, that's grease. But the rest of it is suede. Yeah. yeah. It's the hottest thing in L.A. That's because it doesn't breathe. <laughs> that's why suede is generally used for things like shoulder bags or blindfolds and corsets and whips. Oh, my. <laughs> at school? No. That's a great shirt. I love that shirt. I know. I tried to tell them how nice it was, but they wouldn't be suede. <laughs> hey, that's made out of suede. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said it. It's very clever. Thank you. It has two meanings. I think we covered it. <laughs> wow, do you remember this jacket? I wore this every single day in high school. I can't believe you still have that. I was so jealous when you got it. Yep, you and Danny Partridge. <laughs> What's that? Oh, my God. This is a ticket to, to the heart concert Rusty and I were supposed to go to in high school. I remember I asked you to bring me back a T-shirt, and you never did. Well, that's because we never went. Oh, well, that's one last grudge for me to keep. Yeah. <laughs> I found some of my old clothes you might like. Are you decent? <laughs> We're bound to find you something in here. I always have been eager to dress you up a little fancier. In my day, a woman wouldn't walk out of the house without high heels, a hat, and a pair of white gloves. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, that and a quarter in case you want to put a down payment on the house. <laughs> I appreciate that, Mom, but I am not going to wear any of that stuff. How will you know if you don't try it on? Huh? Might just surprise yourself. Give it a chance. Pretty woman, walking down the street. Pretty woman, the kind I like to meet. Pretty woman, I don't believe you. You know the truth. No one could look as good as you. Okay, I'm done with this montage. <laughs> well, I think you look darling in that outfit. <laughs> and it's too bad because I have the perfect accessory to set that off. A match? <laughs> No, it's a piece of jewelry that I've been saving to hand down to my oldest daughter Aww. on her wedding day. Ew. <laughs> but given your relationship history, why don't we just forget I ever mentioned it? Wait a minute. What does getting married have to do with anything? And what does being the oldest daughter have to do with anything? That's a tradition. <laughs> you give it to someone on their wedding day, because they've proven that they're going to be stable and responsible and that they can handle something of value. That's ridiculous. You're saying that married people are more responsible than single people? I ran three internet companies into the ground, yes, but was that my fault? <laughs> well, that's for the attorneys to decide. You know, legally, I can't talk about this. <laughs> I don't get why the older daughter gets it no matter what. I mean, what does the youngest daughter get? Well, she gets the gift of a longer life. <laughs> well, that's true. No, it's not. Listen, Mom, married or not, I'd like to be a part of this tradition. You know, where I get the valuable stuff. Well, so would I. Oh, grow up, so would I, Infinity. Well, if you insist, but you have to promise to wear it. Of course I'm going to wear it. No, I'm going to keep it in the drawer for safekeeping. <laughs> what is that exactly, Mom? It's a sapphire hawk, dear. <laughs> It's a special brooch that your grandmother gave to me. Oh, it was the pride of Patterson Jewelers. I'm guessing they had some self-esteem issues. <laughs> Listen, I, I was just trying to make a point. Why don't you keep this and give me the next thing? What's the next thing? Helen, <laughs> you've convinced me. It's fine. You can have it. I don't want this. No. <laughs> it's fine. Mom thinks you're the responsible one. But just remember, Ellen, our family legacy is in your hands now. It's up to you to guard it and keep it as if it were your own child. <laughs> Cherish the hawk. <laughs> you cherish the hawk. <laughs> That's big Ellen makeover going. I think I have transformed our friend Ellen into everyone's notion of elegant, proper ladyhood. Ta-da! <laughs> wow. This is ridiculous. I feel like John Lithgow in The World According to Garth. <laughs> You didn't have anything at home? No, all I had was all my old high school clothes. You know what I found? I found that suede jacket that I used to wear every single day. You know what I found in the pocket? <gasps> Hope it's a zero candy bar. I haven't had one of those in years. <laughs> it's not a candy bar. Damn it. <laughs> all right. It was a ticket to the heart concert we were supposed to go to. I, I don't remember going to a heart concert. Well, that's because we never went. You were supposed to pick me up, do you remember? And we didn't go to the concert, and I was all upset. You, you don't remember what I'm talking about? No, no I, I don't remember. <laughs> Why would I lie about that? <laughs> You're the liar. You, know. <laughs> you had an opportunity to go to a heart concert, and you didn't go? Was it the Dog and Butterfly or Dreamboat Annie tour? <laughs> you know, I wouldn't really picture you as a big heart fan. And why not, Ellen? Well, look at how I'm dressed. <laughs> can't judge a book by its cover. Well, 
Sometimes you can. Jaws. Don't tell me you didn't see that one coming. <laughs> right on the cover, the big old teeth. <laughs> Hi, Ellen. Hey, Catherine. Ellen, you look amazing. It's like I'm trying to play Pam in a Lifetime movie. I came by to bring you your brooch, your precious hawk brooch that you're supposed to be so responsible for and not forget. And guess where I found it? In my bottom drawer underneath my sweatpants? No, it was next to them. See, you don't even know where you left it. Well, hello, Ellen. Catherine. Hi, Mr. Martin. Uh, two, please, on the water, if you've got it. I take it you don't like the way I'm dressed? No, no, I love it. I, I just would like to be seated. <laughs> well, go ahead and have your fun, but I'm telling you, Ellen, it's impossible to be too sharp for these people. Well, why don't you wear your brooch, your precious hawk brooch? Ooh, what's that? The women in my family have worn it for years, which explains why they all slump to one side. <laughs> Put it on, put it on, put it on! <laughs> that was close. Well, don't get too attached to this outfit. I'm on my way to Patterson right now to buy something a little less Barbara Bush. <laughs> <laughs> well, not so fast, young lady. You know, you're teaching driver's ed this afternoon. I haven't forgotten. I can't wait. Okay, so the trick to driving is to realize that most people on the road don't know how to do it. <laughs> Take this guy in front of us, for instance never stopping to think that there might be a woman and a boy in the car behind him in a hurry to get to Patterson before the stores close. That's a tapping honk. That's my way of saying you're driving a little slowly. It's been noticed. Ah, uh, there. He's indicating for us to pass. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is give him a short burst of staccato honks. Which is my way of saying I can't pass because there's a truck up there. So let's go back to plan A, which is you pick it up. And people understand this? Oh, look. There, he's waving to us like we're his long-lost friends. Yeah. So now I have to find a way to indicate to him, you're not my friend, you're my obstacle. You know how I'm going to do that? The horn? No, I'm going right out the window for this one. Let's move it, blockhead! <laughs> So, how was Shopper's Ed? What? You took an unauthorized trip to Patterson in the driver's ed car. Well, I... I don't follow you. Well, really? Well, one of our accreditation board members followed you all the way to Patterson, but only after you called him Blockhead. <laughs> Ellen, the idea of having you teach driver's ed was not so that you could have a chauffeur. He's not my chauffeur. That'll be all, Chippers. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Look, I told you, this is a very important week, and I can't afford to have you screw it up for me. Well, listen, Mr. Munn. Rusty, you're the new driver's ed teacher. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I can. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ellen. Well, it's no big deal. Ellen, I can't teach driver's ed. The bowling league? What are they gonna do? Take away your shoes? They take them away anyway. <laughs> no, you don't understand. Well, then tell me. It's embarrassing. Rusty, what is it? I don't know how to drive. You don't know how to drive? Women insane with pleasure. <laughs> Much less embarrassing. <laughs> Drive? I never really thought about it. I guess you don't have a car. Oh, I have a car. 72 Firebird, and she's fast. <laughs> you know, looking. <laughs> it was my older brother's. Tell Mr. Munn you can't drive. I can't tell him. You know how judgmental he is. And when you're an adult, people assume you know how to drive. I guess they do if you're the driver's ed teacher, yeah. <laughs> when people make assumptions. You're supposed to drive when you're 16. You have to be married to be responsible enough to wear a brooch. Remember how crazy my father was? Every time I'd get in a car with him, he'd start hollering at me for every little thing. Yeah? And when I said I didn't want to take the test on my birthday, he called me weird. Weird. And a lot of other things. Other you know? things. So I kept on putting it off until finally I said, who needs it? Yeah, we sure don't. I guess really what I'm saying is, I need you to teach me to drive. 
You know where a good place to learn to drive is? The road to Patterson. Come on. I really appreciate this, Ellen. You're doing a great job. Yeah. You think I'm gonna get a chance to drive soon? <laughs> Guess we have some time. Grab your wheel. Okay. All right, go nice and slow. Okay, all right. Nice and slow. So you're doing fine. Very, very good. Okay, that was a stop sign. I stopped? I can't believe the whole time we dated. Well, the whole time I've known you. Never seen you behind the wheel of a car. That's why we didn't go to that heart concert. You were supposed to drive that night. You were supposed to pick me up, and you never showed up for that. I, I know I messed up that night. I, I heard they played our song. Cadillac. No, it was Barracuda. Cadillac, Cadillac. Watch out for the Cadillac. <laughs> Watch out, blockhead. <laughs> hey, that was Chippers. I taught him that. Beep, 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 beep. You don't have to say it. You have the real thing now. <laughs> Things were never really the same between us after that night. I should have just told you the truth back then. I guess I thought you'd look down on me. Rusty, you are a great guy. You don't have to prove anything to me or anybody else. You just be yourself. I appreciate what you're saying, Ellen, but I got to tell you, being myself, that's just not my thing. <laughs> it's OK, Rusty. For the record, the fact that you couldn't drive never would have changed my feelings for you. Really? Yeah. I think the problem with you is that you were straight. That was definitely no, straight, straight, straight. You're gonna hit that car. You didn't hit it. You hit the other one. You know, I could have sworn that I told you to stay out of the driver's ed car. Yes. Well, and Ellen, you know that car only had 150,000 miles on it. <laughs> Drove like 145. Listen. <laughs> I had personal business to take care of. Totally my fault. No, no, I... no, no. Ellen, it was my fault. Rusty. No, no, I want him to know the truth. <sighs> Mr. Mon, I was in the car with Ellen. And I was the one that got into the accident because Ellen was teaching me how to drive. You don't know how to drive. <laughs> That's right. I was afraid to tell you because I thought you'd make fun of me. And I promised him you wouldn't, right, Mr. Mon? Of course not. So, Rusty. How do you get to school in the morning? Does your mommy drop you off? <laughs> when it's raining. <laughs> and when it's not raining, you... I ride my bike. <laughs> Two-wheeler? Yeah. <laughs> Those can be tricky. <laughs> you know, uh, Rusty, it's starting to cloud up out there. You might want to give your mommy a ring. Oh. <laughs> daughter returns. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. I just felt like saying something, you know, vaguely hostile. Exactly. <laughs> okay, Catherine, you win. You are far more responsible than I am. Does that mean I can really keep the brooch? You really can. I want you to have it. All you have to do is find it. <laughs> oh, boy, this will be fun. Is it somewhere in the house? Catherine, I lost it. You lost our only family heirloom. I like to think of it as loving something and setting it free. <laughs> No, Mom's gonna go berserk. I know. That's why I'm late. I tried to go to Patterson to get another one. I got in an accident. You okay? I'm fine. I totaled the car, but <laughs> I hope, and this is a long shot, that she doesn't notice that it's missing. Where's your brooch? <laughs> um, I, uh, uh... I thought you said you were having it cleaned. That's right. I'm having it cleaned at, uh... Oaks Jewelers. Right. On Main. Yes, that one. Oaks is on Oak Street. Oh. Right into the honey trap. <laughs> Whenever the two of you finish each other's sentences, I know someone is lying. Oh, Mom, that's ridiculous. We're both lying. <laughs> I lost it. I know. Here you go, Catherine, your turn. Where'd that come from? Oh, my friend at the Patterson Mall called me. Apparently, someone took it off and lost it in fun casuals. 
Oh, with your checkbook. How embarrassing. You're not very responsible. No, that people saw me in fun casuals. <laughs> Maybe you should hang on to it, Mom. It wasn't so much the pin. I just wanted to be offered things, you know, to be thought of. I've been thinking of you a lot lately. As a matter of fact, I have something that I think you might want. Oh, Ellen. Your sweet shirt. I know. I know you like it. I love it. Uh. <laughs> it's nice, huh? Is that a grease stain? <laughs> no. No, that's... It's guacamole. <laughs> but you can cover that with your brooch. Your precious hawk brooch. <laughs> oh. Guess she didn't need to see my ID. You come here every week after bowling. What is that? Well, this it's just my uh, learner's permit. 150 pounds? But I'm joining a gym. <laughs> looks like we're getting that accreditation after all. <laughs> yep, a couple more rounds of drinks. I guess we'll have it. Sweet, I asked him to play this. Thought I'd sing to you. Looks like somebody beat you to it. You're lying so low in the breeze. I bet you're going. 